So you're new to theology. You're looking for books, for references, for resources that you can turn to in a moment's notice. But where do you begin? How do you know what to purchase and, and, and what to get and, and how, where to get them and where to begin and all of it? I mean, how much does it cost? And all of these questions that float around in your mind. And uh, so in this video, I'm going to try to answer those questions for you and try to get that overall price around $200. Now, Matthew Everhard um, did a video similar to this. However, Dr. Everhard answered the question mostly relating to people who were in authority at a church, so elders, deacons, teachers, and, and all of those other positions. This particular video is going to be mostly focused to answer the question, where do we begin for the layperson? Any person in a church who is interested in knowing more about theology and studying theology. Um, so if that's you, uh, welcome to Petra Publications. My name is Davis, and here on this channel, I mostly review Reformed Christian books. However, this is a series titled uh, How to Maintain a Library, and so this is the first episode of this series, How to Build a Library. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be trying to get this down under or around $200. Um, if you're new, I welcome you to subscribe. Uh, and if you've been following for a while, um, links to my Patreon and PayPal are down in the description below. Thank you so much. So uh, before we dive in, uh, just to let you know, I am no expert on this topic. I simply have been uh, studying theology for a good little time now. And uh, these are books that I have used very regularly in my study and uh, ones that I know that you would like to have on your shelf as well if you are first beginning. And most of these books that I'm going to be recommending to you, I give two options. One is on a higher end and one is on a lower end. And so if you purchased all of the low end, it's right around $198. And if you go all the way on the high end, it's going to be $294. So uh, you can kind of pick and choose and it's going to be somewhere in between that range. So I tried to keep it at $200, but it, it got a little higher than that. Um, all links to books that are mentioned in this video will be in the description below, as well as Dr. Everhard's video um, and any other thing that I mentioned in this video. So first, I highly recommend, and I'm going to assume that if you're starting your library, your theological library, I'm going to recommend that you have a Bible, and I will assume that you have one already. But I want to recommend to you a specific kind of Bible, a single-column wide-margin ESV. Um, that, that's what this particular one is, and it has been such a blessing and a huge help to my study in theology because I'm able to write notes in it, I'm able to put little symbols in the inner margin, there's plenty of room to read, it's so readable, the text font is, is uh, readable and the size is readable, and so... It makes it very easy to read and to study in and for devotional reading and for uh, text uh, diving and just really studying deeply. It's a great, great resource to have on your shelf or on your desk. And, um, and you know, Bibles have a lot of different um, styles and kinds of Bibles, and, and you can choose which one is best for you. This one is best for me, and that's why I highly recommend it to you. Um, and you can buy a faux leather one for $25. Um, <clears throat> but again, feel free to pick and choose as we go throughout this, this video. This is simply to help you get a general idea of what is necessary. Um, second, I highly recommend a commentary. Commentaries, you're going to want a full Bible commentary. Uh, and there's two ways you can go about this, especially starting out. And so I have here with me, this is the ESV Study Bible. This would be a single volume commentary. And uh, it has so many good notes. And uh, it has cross-references. It has um, all kinds of uh, book breakdowns. Um, and it has all sorts of resources in the back of the Bible. Um, this I reviewed as well as the last Bible already on this channel. So if you're interested in knowing more about these books, uh, you can check those out as well. Um, but yeah, all kinds of resources in the single volume. And again, you can purchase a hardcover copy of that ESV study Bible for just $25. Um, so we're up to $50 now, or if you're looking for a more in-depth 
um, historical uh, commentary, you can always check out Matthew Henry's commentary on the entire Bible. And um, that comes in a six-volume set, and right now it's retailing at around $70. So it's a little bit higher, but it is totally worth it. It's very in-depth, but it's readable. It's a very standard book. Sometimes you can even find it at Goodwill or um, other thrift places, which makes it, of course, much cheaper. Um, <clears throat> but it is just a really standard commentary that, that everyone should own at some point. Uh, third, I highly recommend that you own some kind of dictionary. Now that's going to be both an English dictionary and a theological dictionary. So you can have some kind of uh, Bible dictionary um, or uh, theological dictionary. And here's what I have. This is a Collier's dictionary. This is not a theological dictionary. It's an English dictionary. And as you're studying theology, you'll quickly figure out that a lot of words you don't understand. And so I, especially Old English, it gets very complicated. And so I use my, my dictionary all the time. That's one that I purchased at a thrift store. So I believe I got both for like $4 or something. So there's no reason to spend a lot of money in this area. Um, you can often find things like that. And then also under this head, I highly recommend uh, some kind of thesaurus. Um, it helps immensely when you're writing. It makes things much easier uh, instead of using the same words over and over and over again. And uh, though not necessarily theological, it does help you intellectually to know more English, more words. Um, so I put $40 in this uh, head, and I, I don't think it would cost you that much money, but I was being liberal there to try to um, give a fair estimate on how much this would cost. Uh, fourth, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you have some sort of systematic theology. This is where you will go to appeal uh, to theology of any subject. And um, for this video, I'm going to recommend two books that are single volume systematics. That means there's only one book. Most systematics have, uh, you know, multiple volumes, five, six, sometimes. Um, and so these are on the lower end price wise and they're only one volume, which makes them very accessible and readable. So first, I'm going to recommend uh, Louis Burkhoff's Systematic Theology. This is an excellent book. Uh, again, I've re reviewed this one on the channel, if you're interested in knowing more about that. Um, it just, systematics include every single doctrine from the creation to um, to the end times and and eternal life. Uh, and so anything you want to know, church government, church discipline, the sacraments, um, uh, anything, the Christ, um, the manhood, the Godhead, all of those things, uh, everything that you could want will, will be found in a systematic. Uh, secondly, I recommend the Institutes of the Christian Religion. This is the 1541 edition. Uh, this is, of course, John Calvin, uh, something you can pick up either, uh, Burkhoff was $34 and Calvin is uh, $36. And so they're not too, too expensive, and it's something that you absolutely would need for your theological library. Um, fifth, I highly recommend that you uh, purchase some kind of uh, confession of faith. Maybe you're Baptist, so there's the 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith, or maybe you're Presbyterian and there's the Westminster Confession of Faith, and there are many others that you could choose from, but I highly recommend that you purchase one of those to make sure that you are not wavering in any area of theology um, into heresy or some kind of um, weird doctrine. Uh, those keep you on track, they keep you focused on uh, orthodox historical theology. And you can Usually purchase one of these for less than $6 um, for a paperback version, um, which is really all you would ever need. Um, so I listed that at $6. Um, and then uh, sixth, I recommend a hymnal. Now, why would I recommend a hymnal? Well, it's a huge part of the Christian faith to sing, even if you're not good at singing. Um, the there's <laughs> It's poetic, it's biblical, and um, so I highly recommend that you own a hymnal. So what, which one do I recommend to you? Well, I'm going to recommend to you the Trinity Psalter and Hymnal. This particular one, of course, as the name uh, kind of 
gives way of. There's a Psalter in the beginning, which includes all 150 psalms set to music and uh, written in a poetic form. And so you have all of those plus the regular hymnal uh, hymns. And so you can sing these devotionally, you can study them um, theologically and really know what's in them. Also, if you purchase the Trinity hymnal, there are catechisms and the Westminster Confession in the back, which could save you money uh, in the long run if you don't have to purchase those elsewhere. Um, and then seventh, I'm going to recommend, after you own all of those things, uh, some kind of sermon set. So why would I ask, or why would I recommend this? It's, uh, it's because a set of sermons from the past can be very in-depth. They can cover a wide variety of topics and passages and doctrine, and uh, they're just very thorough and very applicable to life. So I have two different uh, recommendations here. There's a five-volume set of Spurgeon's sermons put out by Hendrickson Publishers. Um, this is a little more expensive. This comes in around... Uh, Let's see here, $70 for the five-volume set. Or I discovered that you can actually purchase each one individually for, I believe, $12, which comes out to be around $65. So you can save $5 if you buy them individually. I'm not sure why that is, but it also gives you the option to purchase them one at a time instead of a lump sum, if that makes things easier. Or there's this wonderful, wonderful single-volume set. This is the Christian in Complete Armor by William Gurnall. Gurnall was a Puritan, and this entire volume, this is some, let's see, how many pages is this? Uh, oh, it's multiple books, I forgot about that. Several, it's about probably maybe 1,000, 1,200 pages or so. Um, all wonderful, wonderful biblical preaching on Ephesians 6. So I think I would lean more towards the Spurgeon sermons, only in that it covers a very wide variety of texts and topics, whereas Gurnall's mostly focuses on spiritual warfare and a single passage of scripture, though of course it's extremely in-depth and extremely helpful. And finally, uh, number eight, I would highly recommend that you own some kind of biography. And the reason I recommend that you own biographies and that you read biographies is because as you begin to study theology, and I believe anyone who's studied theology will will uh, say that this is true, um, there is a point at which you begin to be puffed up with this knowledge and you believe that you're great and that you're doing wonderful things and that you're smart and that you're brilliant. And uh, reading biographies really reminds you that you're not that great, that you don't know that much. In fact, you're really quite ignorant and that certainly is the case for me, and something that I've had to learn um, as I've studied theology. And so there are two books here that I highly recommend under the topic of biography. And the first would be The Fox's Book of Martyrs, which of course covers many, many martyrs throughout church history. Um, this is a kind of a new version of it. This is not what I've linked to in the description. But this one, this particular one, has a, accounts of over 160,000 martyrs, um, which is absolutely insane. But those truly, is that right? That can't be right. Huh. Something like that. Anyway, a lot of them in here. So, um, many, many of them. Very helpful biographies. It truly humbles you and reminds you that uh, you're not the best person to have ever walked the face of the earth. And then secondly, I have J.C. Ryle's Light from Old Times. Again, a biographical book here, and it's got sketches, uh, it has sketches, excuse me, of um, 13 biographies in this book, and each one of them extremely in-depth and helpful uh, to your soul. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, and I forgot to mention that Gurnall comes in at $43 for that single volume, or you can purchase it in paperback for $28. The biographies, uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs is $15, and Ryle's Light from Old Times comes in at $22. Um, 
But anyway, that is all I have for you today. And hopefully that was helpful to you and answered the question, where do I begin? What do I purchase in order to begin my theological library? And so right here, I'll insert a picture or a video of, uh, of the books that I've recommended to you in a line so that you can see what they look like and how many books really that is all together. Um, but if this video interests you and you're interested in knowing more about uh, how to maintain a library, uh, feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you join us on this journey and uh, comment below how you found the channel if you're new. Um, thank you so much, and Lord willing, I will see you again very soon. God bless.